you know, you mentioned you mentioned that Allah's attributes are infinite. Are his names and our knowledge of him, as our names, as his names, I'm sorry, and our knowledge of him. Does anything we link to Allah become infinite by default? Now that's a really good question. That's a very, very good question. And I know who wrote it. <laughs> you know, mashallah. Um, that's a very good question. Uh, first of all, you know, the knowledge, the, the, the attributes. Okay. So he says, you mentioned that Allah's attributes are infinite. And you mentioned that his names are infinite. And you mentioned our, na- our knowledge of him is also infinite. Does anything we link to Allah become infinite by default? Very good question. Uh, there's only one mistake here. And that is that our knowledge of Allah is potentially infinite. But it's not infinite right now. But you have to build that knowledge on the strong, on the sound foundation. You have to have the right basis. And then you begin to get knowledge of God. And that's the whole purpose of the aqidah, is to worship Allah. And, and he says, أَقُولُ هَذَا حَمْدًا لِلَّهِ لَا أَقُولُ هَذَا تَعْلِيمًا وَإِنْ كَانَ التَّعْلِيمُ وَاجِبًا لَكَنْ أَقُولُ حَمْدًا you know, I do this as an act of worship. Okay, so in the end, you know, you know, la ilma, la amal bila ilm. There is no sound practice without knowledge. Wa la ilma bila amal, and there is no knowledge without practice. Don't ever forget that. That's a cognitive frame, and that's a cognitive frame that is absolutely true, and it opens up the universe. I cannot do anything, I cannot practice correctly if I don't have knowledge. You know, how can I make hajj if I don't know how to make hajj? I don't know about wudu, I don't know about ghusl, I don't know about ihram, I don't know about miqat. Not possible, right? I have to know these things. Then I can do the amal. La amal bila ilm. Wa la ilm bila amal. There is no knowledge without practice. You know, so when we get the knowledge, we have to do it. And the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim, when they would memorize a verse of the Quran, they would try to understand what is its hukum, what is the amal that it implies, and then they would do that first, then they take the next verse. Okay, may Allah enable us to do that. If we study this knowledge just as beautiful ideas, and I hope you'll find that they're beautiful ideas and beautiful expressions, but we don't practice it, we don't incorporate it into our life, then it goes away. One of our great shaykhs, he said that when the ma'na first comes to you, it comes like a mountain. He says that when the ma'na, he means by that the understanding of the meaning, right? When it first comes to you, it comes like a mountain. And he says, if you take it, it will always be a mountain. If you don't, it'll go away. And then you forget, oh, that was nothing. Oh, yeah, I remember it was kind of exciting. Okay? Then it maybe comes back. When it comes back, he said it comes back, kathawr, comes back like an ox. He said, then maybe you can get it, maybe you can have it. If you don't, it'll go away. When it comes back, it comes back like a cat. Cats are not easy to get if they're not your cat. Even if it's your cat, it's not easy to get. Right? And then, if you get it, you've got it. And, it. and then if it goes away, maybe it never comes back again. Or if it comes back, it comes back like a little bird. And how are you going to get the little bird? So, you know, when we know the truth, we have to do it. May Allah enable us to do that. That is a very big order. That's very difficult, but you know, we have to have that intention. We have to, and then the knowledge becomes real. The knowledge becomes real. Whoever will practice what he or she knows, God will give them as an inheritance the knowledge they did not know. And our history of Islam is filled with people who only took a basic text like this 
But they practiced it and they became great human beings and filled with light and they guided thousands of people. And the whole secret is just that they practiced what they learned. They practice what they learn. So may Allah enable us to do that. So what we're doing in theology is to get the knowledge that enables us to do the practice. And when we do the practice, then the knowledge grows and grows and grows. And it grows in this world and in the next world. May Allah make us all of the people of the Jannah. May He bring us all together in Firdaus. Okay? And there you see beauty like you never imagined. And you come to a knowledge of Allah that is beyond expression. Okay? But it's all in accordance to what we had here. And it grows and grows and grows and grows. It's infinite, but it's potentially infinite. Okay? When we talk about the infinite, we talk about actual infinites and potential infinites. So whenever we talk about an infinite that is about the created world, we're only talking about a potential infinite. Because there cannot exist an infinite set of temporal things. Mathematics knows it. When they study about infinity in mathematics, they also know that even though we can talk about an infinite set, but it does not exist. It does not exist in the real world. Okay? Um, but when we talk about God, we are talking about infinitudes. Infinite names, infinite attributes. And this is something that is beyond our full comprehension. But what we say of God, as the brother says here, um, does anything we link to Allah become infinite uh, by default? Um, you know, God is necessary being, and He is infinite being. And we'll talk about that tomorrow, bi Um, You know, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. And um, it goes actually beyond aqidah. It goes very much beyond that. But multiplicity, which is the characteristic of creation, is a manifestation of the oneness of God. So inshallah we'll talk about that maybe. If you're able to come, maybe you'll get an answer that's, that's uh, acceptable to you.